Talk with Dr. David Anderson. Happy open phone in Friday. That means anything you want to talk to me about is fair game. Let's go. Live from our nation's capital, welcome to Real Talk with Dr. David Anderson. An expert on race, religion, and relationships, Dr. Anderson wants to talk to you. Our phone lines are now open. 888-432-7434. And now, please welcome Dr. David Anderson, your bridge-building voice in the nation's capital. That's me, your bridge-building voice right here in the nation's capital, covering all of the DMV in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, parts of West Virginia and Pennsylvania as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. We get an hour to hang out with one another. Anything you want to ask me, any topic you want me to interact with you on, that's why I dedicate uh, this hour. That's what I dedicate the hour for every Friday. So welcome. Thanks for hanging with me. It is a call-in talk show, and I'm going to give you the number, and feel free to give me a call right now. I'll get you up on my screen. I can't wait to talk to you. My phone number is 888 888- 432-7434, right? You got it? 888-432-7434, or just remember the word bridge. That is 888-43-BRIDGE. I always like to open the show in a word of prayer as well as close it in a word of prayer, so let's do that now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this week. Thank you for getting us to the weekend, and I just pray for every one of my listeners under the sound of my voice, wherever they are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Now, there are a couple other ways you can get a hold of me. You can always go to andersonspeaks.com, and there you can get other resources and also purchase my books if you don't have them already. You can go to gracismglobal.com. You can get my book, Gracism, The Art of Inclusion, the new expanded edition with David Heiliger and a new eighth saying. And so just go to gracismglobal.com. And there's also a way where we can connect with your organization to help you grow in the area of multicultural effectiveness. If you're looking for a church to hang out in, you can always hang out with me online uh, or in person if you happen to be in the Columbia Maryland or the Owings Mills, Reisterstown, Maryland area. We've got campuses in both locations. I'm the pastor of Bridgeway Community Church. And all you got to do is go to bridgeway.cc. Now, again, my phone number is 888-432-7434. And for those of you who want to look at me in the studio, it's just me waving at you. That's about it. Uh, You can always do that. You can talk online as well by going to my social media, which is at Anderson Speaks. Okay, I'm on Facebook Live right now. I'm on YouTube Live right now. Giving you my sideways peace sign. And thank you so much for tuning in. Say hi to me online, okay? And of course, follow me on social media, all right? 888-43-BRIDGE. Y'all ready to kick the show off? All right, let's see who we're going to kick it off with. How about Mitchellville, Maryland with Miss T.? Who's on the line? Hello, Miss T. It's Dr. Anderson. How are you? Hi, how are you? God bless you, sir. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm alive and grateful. God bless you back. What are you thinking today, Miss T? I have a question for you, and then I also want to make a statement after you answer the question. The question is, are you post-trip or pre-trip? (laughs) Okay, good question. Well, I like to joke around and say I'm pan-trib which means it's all going to pan out in the end because I really don't know. But I do understand the three views of pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. And if you push me, most likely I'd probably fall into the camp of pre-trib. But I'm not firmly there. But if you say out of all those three positions, pre, mid, or post-tribulation of the saints – I'd probably lean toward pre-tribulation. What do you think? Okay. Okay. And so what I'm I'm concerned with, with um, the body of Christ, is that 
I don't see us being as urgent as we need to be right now in the the time of, you know, the time of events. Mm -hmm. And specifically, I'll mention like our education system. Um, The Lord told us that we're going to have our trials and tribulations and be a good cheer because he's overcome them. Mm -hmm. Also, he has warned us about the things that are going to come. And so it seems as though we're just taking the position of, okay, we'll just, you know, wait until he takes us out of here without preparing, um, preparing for the worst. And for, for instance, with our education system, we have churches um, in every community, right? Yes. But yet um, Christians may send their kids to school and if they don't like the school, they'll take them out and homeschool them. But then there's a whole uh, generation of other children who parents can't afford to necessarily take them out. Right. Why is the church getting more involved in educating? Then we're helping to shape the minds of, you know, what's coming up, what, you know, these young people are thinking these days. Yeah. And we can do that as a body collectively, Right. We can, and uh, I think we should. It's always a little bit tricky when you're dealing with people's children, isn't it? Because there's a part of us that says, you know, we want to raise our kids in a way that they get the values of Scripture and God and and all of that, and we hate to give them over for eight hours to a, a school system that may be teaching them more than just math and writing and arithmetic or all that, and now there's all these other issues they have to deal with regarding uh, other topics that may not fall in line with our faith or bullying or whatever it may be. And I know it's 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 very tricky, uh, but I do think churches ought to be involved. You know, my sister's an educator, and she often says the churches ought to be involved. She runs a life group in our church called Educators for Christ. So if you're in an education system, uh, you know, they get together and they they pray and they read scripture and they support one another as Christian administrators and teachers in the public school system. And so I do think that you are right, that there has to be a way to influence the school system for Christ. And a lot of Christians take their kids out because they don't want to sacrifice them on the altar of sort of evangelism in the public school system while their kids get influenced uh, in the world. It's a really touchy subject, isn't it? Yeah, but it also goes to our fi- our financial system when he says we're not going to be able to buy or sell anything without the mark of the, you know, these. But why couldn't we develop a parallel system where we can, as as the body of Christ, trade with one another if we're in the midst of that, if we haven't been raptured on, where we are, we have a system where we are able to buy and sell from each other without, you know. Are you thinking like it's a, just a parallel Christ- systems that we need? You understand? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you thinking, Miss T, of a uh, a Christian school system, like a private school system that's affordable for everyone? No, I'm talking about right now the financial system, and I'll give you a, just a real quick uh, scenario that I know of. Okay. A person was trying to um, get their money um, out of a, um, a stock 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 brokerage. Uh And because they didn't want to give them their telephone number, they don't do financial transactions with the telephone number because they believe a telephone number is just another uh, public social security number. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't want to reveal that, the company said, well, we got to authenticate you. Well, they had all that person's information, passport, driver's license, online, everything that they could have. Um, And so the person said, well, if I go into one of your local branches, can I then get my money if I show them my ID? And so they went into the local branch and they presented all of their ID, passport, mm-hmm. driver's license, and still, unless they provided a telephone number, they would not give that person their money. Mm-hmm. They were just trying to get it transferred to another banking system. I see. But finally, the person put their foot down and said, look, I'm not leaving here until you do <laughs> give me my money and go get your supervisor and so on and so forth. And so the supervisor was brought in and finally they um, allowed that person to take their funds. And so gotcha. this attachment to a cell phone even gotcha. where they're not going to do anything unless they can authenticate you through that. Yeah. I believe the mark of the beast is already in our hands and in our Head gotcha. on our head with the cell phone. Gotcha. Well, it's mm-hmm. gonna it's gonna be hard not to integrate yourself into the works of the of the world system 
because you're kind of connecting the mark of the beast, pre-trib, post-trib, education system, banking, financial system. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, it's and cell phones. I mean, that's way too, way too complicated for me. Uh, the reality, the, I mean, the reality is if she didn't want to give her cell phone number and that's the system that they have, then she did the right thing to fight it. She got her money. Good for her. But if you think we're going to now somehow change the whole banking system so they don't need her phone number or something, that's good stuff to talk about. But I just don't think it's reality. My two cents. OK, thank you. All right. Thank you, Miss T. Let's go to Upper Marlboro, Maryland, to talk to Mr. Corey as soon as I get back from my commercial break. So hold on, Mr. Corey. My lines are open, by the way. If you want to grab one, it's open phone in Friday. 888-43-BRIDGE. Does your church have legal challenges? McCullum & Associates has experience with pastor church relations, administration and organizational issues, church liability and risk management, and real estate matters. This firm understands the legal aspects of the problems, as well as the spiritual implications of those same problems inside and outside the court. Call McCullum & Associates today at 301-864-6070. That's 301-864-6070. When asked the question raised by her professor, why are you here at Omega Graduate School? Sebla Digluhailu answered in one of her essays like this. I was not there just to add a prefix to my name, though that would feel good. The greater purpose of my preparation at OGS is to fulfill my mandate to be a change agent. The doctoral study is a time of preparation for me to see and to think, to understand the times, and to craft my way in fulfilling my calling. Sebla Diglu Hailu, a current Doctor of Philosophy student from Ethiopia, is a counselor and adjunct psychology professor who hosts a weekly radio show in the capital city of Ethiopia and is an advocate for empowering women and children. What is your profession and how can OGS help you grow to the next level in your graduate education? Dr. David Anderson is the new chancellor of Omega Graduate School, formerly known as Oxford Graduate School, and your education as a working adult is important to him, to God, and to all who will be changed in the world because of your important research. Go to OGS.edu today and apply, or call 1-800-933-6188. Real Talk with Dr. David Anderson is not just an insightful radio talk show, but also a conversation that encourages listeners to engage in higher levels of understanding. Here's what people are saying about the show. Dr. Anderson, I've been listening to you for a couple years now, and I just wanted to call in and say amen and hallelujah. You are on the mark. I listen to you uh, very much, and it's, good, it's very, very good to hear your refreshing voice on the radio. You are not afraid to take any topic. Uh, you are very humble, and um, it's, it just gives us comfort. I love the radio station. My favorite is Marriage Mondays. Even though I'm not married, it's okay. I love it. I love the advice. I listen to it all the time. I have my notifications on. I was on the show once upon a time. Um, so I just love the advice and just the biblical sound and just stuff that he says on here. So it's amazing to listen to. He's such an inspiration because not only does he impact the um, local area, but his message is so powerful that it deserves to go on a broader spectrum. Comprehension begins with conversation. is not just a phrase, it's a reality. Join the conversation at Real Talk with Dr. David Anderson. Today is Open Phone in Friday. The show is all about you. Call in with anything you want to discuss. Now back to the show with your host, Dr. David Anderson. It's me, David Anderson, live with you on Open Phone in Friday. Anything you want to talk to me about is fair game. Give me a call on Marriage Monday. We talked about dating before divorce. Is it okay to start dating before your divorce is final? Why or why not? On Tough Topic Tuesday, we talked about declining church attendance 
with the Gallup poll teaching or revealing and reporting uh, that uh, less people are going to church. And I asked, are you a church attender? Why or why not? I asked if you've attended in the last four weeks, how many times? One, two, three, or four weeks. Then on Wisdom Wednesday, we had our special guest, Reverend Dr. May Cannon, and she uh, was with us to talk about Middle East peace, the wisdom of peace in the Middle East. And then yesterday, we talked about the Sabbath on Theological Thursday. Do you observe the Sabbath? Should you observe the Sabbath? So we talked about a lot this week, and today we're going to talk about whatever it is you want to discuss. So feel free to give me a call. My number is 888-432-7434. As promised, I'm going to Upper Marlboro, Maryland. We're going to talk to Corey, who's on the line. Hello, Mr. Corey. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well, Dr. Anderson. How are you doing? Oh, I'm alive and grateful, my friend. Thanks for hanging out with me. What are you thinking? So I want to talk about the uh, the topic about declining church attendance. Yes. And I have a couple of thoughts about that. First of all, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much a regular church attender. You know, I, I attend pretty much every Sunday unless I'm traveling or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I think one of the reasons why we're seeing a decline in church affiliation, in fact, really religious affiliation, is um, there's been a lot of abuse that's been un- uncovered when it comes to a lot of the churches, you know, pastors um, have been abusing their members, or there's also the issue of uh, many pastors and leaders not quite living up to what they profess. Yeah. So I think when you have a lot of those things going on in churches, not every church, but but some churches, people have this mindset of, well, if there's so much hypocrisy in the church, why should I affiliate with it to begin with? Right. Um, and I think the other reason is, is that if we look at this thing generationally, the older generations tend to actually be affiliated with religious institutions or, you know, church, as opposed to younger generations. And I think yeah. the, you know, younger generations, they're not as involved as they once, you know, as, as older generations are. So I think there's a correlation when it comes to people's mindsets and just generationally speaking. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with you that you know, church hypocrisy or church issues can definitely cause uh, people not to want to go to church. But then there are also uh, the statistics that are telling us that people are less religious now. And so as we continue to grow less religious, uh, people are not going to go into the house of the Lord as much either. And, and so even older people, if they stop going to church, then when they're raising their kids— their kids aren't even going to see that model. And so I think, um, you know, there are a lot of reasons, uh, according to the Gallup poll, why um, why people aren't going to church. But it's it's kind of sad. And it's great to see big churches that are growing and also, also vibrant churches. They may be smaller, but they're vibrant. It's great to see that. But I do think that uh, as the, the, the nation becomes more secular, uh, you're probably going to have lower lower church attendance which makes pastors like myself have to think creatively, what are ways to reach people besides maybe just getting them into the building um, on a Sunday? You know what I mean? Yes, and I think that's where a lot of churches are implementing um, technology. Um, There's Mm -hmm. actually a YouTube channel that I've been watching. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's um, Grace for Purpose. And they have two YouTube channels. One, they have just straight teaching of Scripture, and then they have another one where they do prayer um, Mm -hmm. and the Scripture. And what I've noticed is that one of those channels, they actually use artificial intelligence in how they present their, um, you know, their their kind of like small or, you know, their sermons, if you will. And I think using technology is where a lot of churches are going to be and where they already are. Yeah, COVID um, helped that too, Because the other generations already have a fault on it. Yes. Right. I mean, we when we couldn't come into the church building, you know, for those uh, ministries that were technologically savvy, they were able to to pivot. But for those that weren't, a lot of them, unfortunately, poorly lost uh, so many people, you know. Yes. And I think um, one other thing I'll say real quick is that I think even with that technology can be used uh, useful, but 
you have to be careful with that because it's not meant to be a substitute for actual interaction with people and even accountability unto leadership in the church. That's right. And I probably should have a uh, AI expert come on the show uh, because I think that this is the area in the future that's going to affect all of us because even people who are sending uh, TikTok, uh, you know, uh, links to me of a person speaking, I could tell by looking at the lips that it was generated, you know, and even though what they may be saying uh, is true, like some good Christian stuff, like you're supposed to love your neighbor and all this other stuff, you could look at the lips and like, okay, this is not a real person talking. Someone created this. And and I don't know, it kind of weirds me out a little bit, to be honest with you, Corey. Yes, yes, it does. I mean, I think <laughs> what you're talking about is that would be like a deep fake anyway. Right. Um, and, and and I think that's the kind of scary place we're, we're in in this day and time. You know, you talk about, uh, I think the caller before me talked about the uh, the end times and right. pre-tribulation and things like that. Right. And all of that ties in. The technology yeah. is there. Yeah. But I think we as Christians can utilize that, um, you know, for Christ. But at the same time, we have to be aware of, okay, what is you know, Satan is also using that as well. And it's in every area though. Like I've seen people do some writing and I read their writing. I'm like, okay, their writing's okay. And then they'll submit something and it's like amazing. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, what happened? And so at least they're honest enough to say, you know, I put it in chat uh, GPT or whatever. And it gave me this brilliant, brilliant article. And I'm like, okay. I mean, that's pretty amazing. You just put in a few words and it can write something that's, absolutely glorious so i know it can be helpful but i just don't know who's the real author now is it Corey who wrote this article is it Corey who put the words into chat gpt and then this beautiful article comes out and he puts his name on it it's still true it's still good i just don't know who the brainchild is anymore well i I think i'll say real quick i think the the hard part about that is is that people can use it and if they try to profit from it in the wrong way, that's where I think you kind of cross that line, like even morally, but then it also hurts people who are actually out there in the, in the business realm, trying to make an honest living, doing things like writing or, or even when it comes to academia, you know, not uh, using technology to kind of, um, you know, get yourself ahead of the class when you should be learning just like everyone else. Yep, there you go, man. Hey, well, listen, it's good kicking it with you on this Friday, okay, my friend? You too. Thank you very much, Dr. Anderson. Take care. And by the way, I do think that if you uh, submit a report to your boss or or to your school uh, and you're writing something, I think you can put your name on and say, this is written by Dr. David Anderson, but I would also say it should say, with the assistance of ChatGPT or with the assistance of AI. I feel like that's the more honest way to do it. I don't know, what do y'all think about that? 888-432-7434. We haven't been in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Let's go there quickly. Hello, uh, Mr. Mario, this is Dr. Ms. Mario, this is Dr. Anderson, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. Dr. Anderson, how are you? Oh, I'm alive and grateful, what are you thinking? Well, I want you to picture this for a second. Okay, you have your phone in front of you because everybody has their phones, they're into their phones, correct? Well, yeah. imagine seeing, let's say, the apocalypse, how that awestruck look that's on, you know, your phone. Mm-hmm. Now, switch that to what Jesus said when he said, every knee shall bow and every, you know, every eye shall see him. Okay. What do you think about the, the AI is going to, in, is going to, cause us to be so involved, whether it be phone or some type of media, that that is the way every knee shall bow. Oh, not every knee shall bow, I'm sorry. That everyone would see him when he comes back. Everybody would see him through mm-hmm. modern day technology. What do you well, think? Well, I'm not sure. I know it says he's going to break through the clouds and, uh, you know, we're going to hear the Trump sound. A trumpet sound uh, and so therefore uh, whether you can also see it on your phone at the same time you know don't know I don't think anybody's yeah. gonna be looking at their phone when he breaks through the clouds they're gonna drop their phones and say oh Lord Jesus hey listen thanks for hanging with me Mario I'll be right back
There's a beat for you. It's Real Talk with Dr. David Anderson. It's open phone in Friday, and anything you want to talk to me about is fair game. So give me a call. I'm ready to hang out with you. I'm going to give you the number, and then I'm going to go right back to the phone lines. My phone number is 888-432-7434. Let's talk to Mike. He's on the road in Maryland. Hey, Mike, how you doing today, sir? I'm good, Doc. It's a great day. Hope you're enjoying it, too. Yeah, it's beautiful, man, and it's good to hang out with you as well. What are you thinking? Well, what I'm wondering is a kind of a deep theological question. Um, considering some of the news of the day, I'm wondering uh, the the judgment, the final judgment. Is there is there any um, is there any indication that people may or may not be there? You know, like like may some woman named Nicole be there as she tries to watch a guy hurdle the lake of fire? Oh, you're trying to be funny. Um... Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's, uh, scripture says anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It also says that, uh, God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him would not perish or die, uh, but have everlasting life. But it also says that the wages of sin is death. And so therefore there are some people, uh, who might not make it. The gift of God is eternal life. There's two eternities, right? And we know how you get into one of them, and that is through Jesus Christ. And if you confess your sins to him and say, Lord, come into my life, you have eter- you have heard it over hell, and you can land in heaven. Uh, but if you haven't, then you'll spend the rest of your eternity separated from Christ. And uh, that's that's just a reality. I hate, I hate that reality, by the way, but God is just. And his judgment's just, so we, we leave that to him, and we tell everybody about the love of Christ. What do you think? Uh, but, but there's no indication whether, you know, when, when they talk about all your sins will be, you know, out in the open, is there any, is there any biblical support for or against that there'll be an audience? There's not even biblical support that all your sins will be revealed to everybody. I mean, I, I think that is our interpretation of good preaching. And, you know, one day you'll stand before the Lord and every bad thing you've ever done will be before you or, or and things of that sort. There's really no scripture uh, that that says it's going to be on a big video screen. That's just. You know, that's just bad Sunday school teaching. It is. Now, will all things be revealed? Yes. But how are they going to be revealed to who they're going to be revealed to? It'll be revealed to us. Like, you know, so if you're going to go to hell, uh, you're going to know all your all your sins are going to be before you. I don't think the Lord's going to have to list everyone out from the time you were born until the time you die. Uh, but again, that's just conjecture. What we do know is every every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, everyone on the earth and even under the earth, it says. So uh, there's nothing that will not bow to the lordship of Jesus when he comes back. Thanks for your uh, clarification. Hey, man, that's a good, good theological Thursday question. I appreciate you asking today, man. Take care of yourself. You bet. All right, let's go to George. He's uh, driving in southern Maryland. Hello, Mr. George. It's Dr. Anderson. How are you, sir? How are you? I am doing absolutely fine. It's a beautiful day. Amen. I actually have two things to ask you. Thank you. Uh, one of them is the people that are in heaven, do they see us and hear us and know what's going on down here? My way of thought is if they're in heaven and they know all of that, it wouldn't be very pleasant for them. Yeah, so it's hard for me to say indefinitely um definitely whether they do or whether they don't but i can give you some conjecture some of my thoughts we do know that when christ comes back he's going to bring with him all those who have died in christ right so my father who's up there uh will be coming back with him that's one thing we also know that when we get to heaven, he's going to wipe every tear from our eye and we're going to forever uh, be in his glory and there's going to be no more sickness, no more sadness, and no more sorrow. However, that that uh, vision is not until he takes us back according to Revelation chapter 21. So therefore, between now and Revelation 21, your question is, 
do the people in heaven see us? Well, we know in Hebrews, it talks about there's a great cloud of witnesses. And so what are they witnessing? Um, you know, we're going to be joining them. So are they pulling for us? Are they uh, cheering for us? Who knows? One thing I do know, they're in the presence of God. Uh, they're at the throne of the Lord. They are going to be coming back with him. And there is a day where there's going to be no more sickness or no more sad sadness or sorrow where he'll wipe every tear from our eye. But that time is not until he takes us back into the eternal state. So if you want me to, if you want me to say one way or the other, I would say probably not thinking about us. But at the same time, I know that's sad for someone who goes to the graveyard or is saying, you know, I think my mom is looking over me or watching over me. There's nothing in the Bible that actually confirms that. I know it makes people feel good. My grandpa's with me or my father is talking to me. I'm not going to say, listen, you're you're off your rocker. I'm just going to say there's no real biblical support for that. But if that makes you feel comforted, the memory of him or the the, the fact that you feel like he's close you know, I'm not going to tell you you're crazy. I'm just going to say, I don't think there's much biblical support for that. No, I, I didn't either. And I've heard preachers say that, uh, you know, they're looking down on you. They're watching out for you. So I, I was yeah. just unsure. Yeah, probably, other, probably other, not. I, I'm question. with you on that, George. Probably not. The angels are a different story, but you're the people who've gone ahead of you. Probably not. Okay. The other thing is, and it breaks my heart, Jesus said that the, that the path that saves you is narrow, and very few people are going to be on it, and the road to destruction is wide. Now, I interpret that as being there's going to be more people in hell than there are in heaven. That's true. That's true. That's sad. Uh, that really, that, yeah. you know, that, that should really cement every single one of us to tell people about Jesus. That's the whole point that we're supposed that we're commanded to go and make disciples because of that sad reality. Because remember, all humanity after Adam and Eve are already doomed for hell. So it's not like we're being sent uh, to a an eternity based on our behavior. When we're born, we're born in sin. We're shaped in iniquity. The plane is already going down. Salvation is the fact that God reaches his arm out of heaven, sticks it in the side of the plane, and pulls George out and pulls David Anderson out. But the plane is still going down. And what George and David Anderson are saying is, Lord, hang on, let me grab uh, my son and tell him the gospel. Let me grab my neighbor and tell her the gospel. Before it goes all the way down, let me try to save as many people as possible by sharing Christ with them because the plane is going down. But at the end of the day, more people are going to be on the plane when it crashes than those who will be, be saved. Because there's some people that George reaches back and says, listen, come on, honey, we got to go. The Lord just wants to save us. And honey says back to George, nope, I'm good. I'm on the plane, and I really want to order another drink. It's not really going down. I don't believe it's going down. I like this plane. It's comfortable. I'm not going with you. You see what I'm saying? And that's the struggle between humanity and salvation. Yeah, God doesn't send anybody to hell. <laughs> Our choices. Yeah. Put us there or don't. Yeah, we're already doomed to go. So what we need is salvation yeah. salvation from it. Uh, John 3, 17 says that the world is condemned already. So we're already going to hell. The question is, will we be saved from it? That's why they use the term saved. You know, it, you got to be saved from something. Where are we being saved from? We're being saved from hell. And so we're already all deserving of it. We're already all dead and cry, dead. We, we all are already going to hell. But God sent his son Jesus because he loves us so that we don't go to hell. And that's the choice we have to make to say, yes, save me, Lord. Yes, I want to not go to hell. I want to be with you in heaven. That's what the gospel truly is, my friend. And I really appreciate you asking the question yeah, to help well, clarify it for those who might be listening right now. And they needed to hear that, that word. So thank you, George. You have a blessed day, sir. You too, my friend. But it is sad, so let's turn that frown around and go to heaven by accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. When I get back, I'm coming to you. 
Hang on. It's the song of the redeemed Rising from the African plain It's the song of the Do you need to be encouraged or do you know someone that needs encouragement? Dr. David Anderson has compiled his sermon series, Be Encouraged, into a book which will be sure to encourage yourself and others. For a donation in any amount, we'll send you a signed copy of the book. To make your donation, visit andersonspeaks.com, click on the donate button, and we'll send you your copy today. Want more Real Talk with Dr. David Anderson? You can now catch Dr. Anderson's half-hour radio highlight show on Saturdays at 3 p.m. right here on WAVA 105.1. You'll enjoy recent conversations he's had with callers to this show. Real Talk with Dr. David Anderson, Weekend Edition, Saturday, 3 p.m. on WAVA. Check it out. For more information about Dr. Anderson, visit andersonspeaks.com. If you're anything like me, you see all the division and hostility in the world, and you know that if you just had the right tools, you could make a difference. You could help bring some healing. You could be a bridge builder. Guided by Dr. David Anderson and the Gracism Global Team, I learned how to live and lead by becoming a positive solution in a world that's dealing with such negative problems. I went from feeling overwhelmed to being empowered from being a bystander to becoming a bridge builder. Dr. Anderson has taken the principles of racism around the world, helping corporations, ministries, nonprofits, and government leaders grow in their ability to bridge the deepest divides of color, class, and culture. Through Gracism Global's coaching and certifications, you can gain the confidence and skills to bring change right where you are. Whether for you or your whole organization, we're here to help you bring the power of racism into your life and leadership today. Visit gracismglobal.com and join us on this transformative journey. We're not just fighting against racism, we're building a world of gracism. talk with dr david anderson it's open phone in friday and anything you want to talk to me about is fair game ask me any question you want or uh ask me to connect with you on any topic that's important to you uh that's today it's all about you uh, my phone number is 888-432-7434 by the way i hope you got my uh, inspirational text this morning about wisdom all right. If you are not a part of my inspirational text community, it's free. All you have to do is text me the word inspire. All right. I-N-S-P-I-R-E. Inspire. Just one word and text it to this five digit code. 97,000. Real easy. 97000. Inspire. All right. Robert's been on the line for a while from Columbia, Maryland. So let's go there. Hello, Mr. Robert. It's Dr. Anderson here. How are you? All right, Dr. Anderson. Thank you for saying thank you for watching on the thing for me. So that's, uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I finally got on YouTube here and I was, you know, watching you here. So anyway, uh, I'm waving at you. I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, uh, hi. So I, uh, I have, uh, I, I have something, uh, there may not be an answer to this. Uh, well, not. Okay. So, all right, so I was on my I was on my journey uh, of trying to find out uh, some information. And I, I think that you know when I when I'm going through and I'm reading the Bible, um, our human understanding of what time is and what the divine time is is there there isn't any uh, I don't see any they're, they're totally different the the amount of time. Okay. So um, and uh, so so. So just just real quick. So if you go to so if I went to Genesis, right, the seventh day, and then if you go to Second Peter three eight, uh, be not ignorant of this. The one day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. 
and uh, and and the rev- and then with a lot of the revelations with the, with Jesus and uh, and them saying that he's going to be come he's going to come quickly, and uh, looking at the the time and understanding what that is and uh, not and and knowing that we don't have an idea of what the actual time is. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, I think that you know, I, th- I understand that's 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 a piece of it, and some people say, well, you know, that you got to understand the big picture. Well, you have you have the idea of when you're reading it, right? That's the mm-hmm. word of God. So you're going to take a li- are you going to take a literal measurement? Um, and uh, I, I guess I'm trying to find. I guess what I'm trying to. I guess what I'm trying to see is that. Uh, uh, it, it, so how do you know when to take the word literally? Yeah. Uh, 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 because you know, and and when gotcha. not? Because you know, quick, quick, quickly. You know, what was it? Uh, how, how many years has it been since Jesus rose from Jesus rose and went to heaven? Uh, so what is so what is quickly? And I don't think there's an answer for that. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know, God is above time and space, right? And so he has all the time in the world, so to speak. So he's not anxious and quickly to him could be different than what quickly to us means. Although there are some time markers that have been given uh, to us in scripture, whether it's a 24 hour day, the way he created the heavens, the earth, it was evening and then it was morning the first day, we can at least see that we live within time. And that he also tells us that no man knows the day or the hour when the Lord will return. And so we know that we are supposed to be expectant of him. We know that um, there are some things that have to be put in place for him to return. I was in a Bible study with my elders on Thursday morning. That would be yesterday morning. And one of the things we learned and talked about is the concept of what you're talking about, time. And that God is really dealing with not necessarily time as important as we think time is, but conditions. And the difference between time and conditions, God is waiting for the right conditions in order to move in a certain way. And so while we're trying to time the moving of a cloud or a a weather system, he is looking at all the conditions that have to be in place in order for something to happen. We're stuck in time, so we want something to happen right now, but God might be saying, but listen, we're still waiting on this other condition, this other weather system to connect with this weather system. And when it all comes together, that's when I'm gonna move on your job, that's when I'm gonna move in your health, that's when I'm gonna move in your family. And so what I need you to do is to be faithful and be prayerful and be fruitful during that time while you're waiting uh, for the conditions when God moves. So you, you make a really good point that, you know, time can be literal. Sometimes it's more seasonal, but when God moves, he's never late. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, well, that was well said, but, well, thank you, Doctor Anderson. Hey, yeah, I, I appreciate that. And, and the only, other, the only other thing, the only other thing I want to do is just mention, uh, is just men- is mention is, is that the, uh, the, uh, the app. I got the uh, Gateway app, the Bible Gateway. Oh yeah, it's good. BibleGateway dot com or the Bible Gateway app. You can read scripture that way. I do that as well. Hey, listen, I got to run. I'm going to the break. Robert from Columbia. God bless you.
Well, Lady Amber and I would not be in the beautiful home that we're in if God didn't use Maria Weaver. She's an amazing realtor with Remax for those of you who are in Maryland. If you want to sell your home, if you want to buy a home, uh, if you want advice and consultation about what to do with your home, Maria Weaver is the one to call. We personally know her, and she will serve you so very well. Had one guy interview three different realtors, and then he heard about Maria Weaver on my show, and he says, I've got to call her. And so he did, and he wanted to interview her before he made his final decision, and he decided to go with Maria Weaver instead of the other three. And as a result, he not only sold uh, his home, which is an amazing home, guess who he sold it to? That's right. He sold it to me. And so, friends, what I'm saying is God used Maria Weaver in my life and in several other people's lives who I know, and he will use her in yours. Give her a call if you're in Maryland and you want to buy or sell a home. Here's her number. Are you ready? Write it down. 410-258-0600. Zero four. You tell people that's who Dr. Anderson used. That's who he trusts when it comes to real estate in Maryland. I'm going to give you her number one more time. 410-258-0604. All right. Pass it on to your friends. Call Maria Weaver if you want to buy or sell a home in Maryland. Last time, here's the number. 410-258-0604. 04. Thank you, Maria Weaver. All right, let me take my final call with Anonymous in Washington, D.C. Hello, Anonymous. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, sir. I, I just want to thank you for this week's programming. It's given me a lot of things to think about and process and um, just glad to to have you as, you know, kind of, uh, you know, um, feeding into my Christian walk. So just thank you. And, and I hope you have a great weekend. Oh, isn't that kind of you? I do appreciate that. Lord bless you. I receive that. And I love your gratitude. May the Lord protect you and be with you this weekend as well. Okay. Okay. All right. God bless. Well, maybe I can slide one more in. Let's see. Grace from Baltimore, Maryland. Hello, Miss Grace. It's Dr. Anderson. How are you? Hello, Dr. Anderson. I'm doing well, thanks. Good. What's your comment or question, please? Well, I I wondered about the eclipse that there was so much that I felt that God was saying, and I wondered what your thoughts are. Do you see it as an evangelistic opportunity? Gotcha. You know, the Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of the Lord, and many people had even said it was more of an exper uh, a more spiritual experience than they had than they had anticipated. Uh, but I love the fact that the earth and the firmament and all in the space and all astrology, all of it uh, in astronomy, it just all uh, glorifies God. And so it shows that no man can even control the moon, the sun, and the stars except the one who created the moon, the sun, and the stars. And so to be able to use that to show people or to com communicate to people the, the handiwork of God, it can definitely be used as an opportunity for evangelism. So may the Lord be glorified even in that. Amen. Amen. All righty. God bless you. Lord Jesus, thank you for the show and thank you for my listeners. Uh, bless them and be with them over the weekend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Father, help your children. 